Joy to the world. Oh yeah, I had to say it. I had to just get it out. It was the first thing on my heart, first thing on my mind, and I had to just proclaim it over you. Joy to you. My friend, if you're struggling right now and you're feeling down and you're discouraged, if this has been one of the toughest years of your life, this is the perfect, the perfect message for you. I just really want to invite the Holy Spirit to, to, uh, to help you, to help me, because I really believe that God has a promise for you to lift you up and to wipe off all the discouragement out of your life and to set your feet on the path of life and joy. So let's just invite the Holy Spirit to help us. Precious Lord, help my brother, my sister. Lord, do exactly that. Just remove the focus on discouragement and on all the pain. Lord, some people right now are struggling even with suicidal thoughts. Lord, just remove that pain. Lord, that that, that thought, Lord, that thought to want to just end it all. And God, right now, may there be a light, a glimmer of your hope, your authentic light, the seed of your light coming into their heart right now. May they fix their eyes on the truth of your word and receive the promise of of your incorruptible seed that will never fail. Help us, Holy Spirit. We never want to take for granted the access we have to your precious presence. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joy to the world. Part two of our series on joy to the world. This is so exciting because we're getting the ingredients, the recipe, the formula, God's word on how to have authentic joy in our life. I want it. You want it. We can't live without it. God made you for joy. Did you know that? God made you to hold, to retain, to be a vessel of his honor, his glory, and yes, his joy. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I mean, if you're going to have strength to live life, you got to have the joy of the Lord, not the fake stuff, the real thing. And we've been just talking about recipes. We've been talking about good Christmas home baking. And I just feel like it's just such a good thing that the Holy Spirit has just kind of um, downloaded for us to realize that, you know, you got to have the real recipe. You got to have the real ingredients to get the real outcome of joy. In this season of Advent, We look forward to Christmas because it's the celebration of Christ's first coming as Savior, but it's also, Advent's also the anticipation of His second coming as King. And you know what? There's excitement in the air. You can just feel it. There's excitement in the air. When you're looking to the authentic light, the true light of the world, there is really excitement in the air. A young boy, he was writing a letter to God about Christmas presents. And he, and he desperately wanted these Christmas presents. And, and so, you know, he began penning his, his best, most, um, um, you know, sometimes you got to put your foot, your best foot forward and you got to kind of sell yourself, right? So that's what he was doing. He's like, you know, God, I've been good for six months now. But, but the lie was just, it, it was too strong for him. So then he paused and he, he crossed out six months and then instead he wrote three months. He Penned in three months above the six months. And then rethinking it, he, he, it just, it was too much. It, you know, you can sell yourself, but you, you can go way too far. And he was too far. So he just crossed out the three months. And then what he did was he, he put two weeks. Yeah, there was another pause. Finally, he crossed out the two weeks too. He got up from the table. He went over to the nativity scene and, and, and he picked up the figure of Mary. He gently wrapped her in a cloth. And then he took her to his room and he put her in his drawer in a safe place. And then he went back to his table where he was writing and he started all over fresh. Dear God, if you, if you ever want to see your mother again. <laughs> C.S. Lewis once was a very determined atheist. He came to the truth of God's word and wrote, The eternal being who knows everything and who created the whole universe became not only a man, but a baby. And before that, a fetus in a woman's body. Isn't that amazing? That the birth of Jesus, the only begotten son, it's the message of great joy that persuades even the most hardened, hostile opposition. Yes, even atheists are desperate for great joy. C.S. Lewis said that as an atheist, he was, quote, angry with God for not existing. My friend, we need hope. 
the angel came to bring good news of great joy. I got to say it again, good news of great joy. And, he, and it was, the announcement was to those who were desperate, hurting, lost, downcast, challenged people, people struggling. You know what? That's you and that's me. That's all of us. People without hope, without Christ, we have no hope. If our hope is in this life alone, we are most miserable of all people. The picture we're given is of people living out in the open. When the angel made the announcement, remember that. They were people living out under an open sky without a roof over their heads. They were financially broke. They were suffering. They were struggling. Turn with me again to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And in that vicinity, there were shepherds living out under the open sky in the field, watching in shifts over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them, and they were terribly frightened. Why is that when we see good things, when we hear good things from God, if we've got any fear in our heart, the moment God shows up, we're terribly frightened. And then verse 10, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid for I behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the town of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Good news of great joy. We learn that joy has principal ingredients, not fake, not alternate substitutes. You can't make chocolate chip cookies without chocolate chips. Look, I'm not even a baking expert, and I can tell you this. You can't make chocolate chip cookies without chocolate chips. You can try, but even your kids will go, hey, 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 what, where, where's the chocolate chips? What's going on here? One ingredient does not make the cookie. So let's say you do get the chocolate chips, or for some, it may be even raisins. Yuck. I used to tell my mom when she'd put raisins in her baking, Mom, Mom, why are you ruining your baking? I, I would try to sell her on it. Mom, don't ruin the baking. I even have an uncle who his favorite pie is raisin pie. Now tell me he doesn't need Jesus. I mean, if, you, if your favorite pie is raisin pie, that's sad. You, you need help. But one ingredient, no matter how right, doesn't make the bake. You need the whole recipe, right? One ingredient doesn't make the bake. You know, we have people going to church who have joy, and we got people going to church with absolutely no joy. We have people listening to God's Word online with joy, but we've got some who have absolutely no joy. Well, how can that be, you ask? Look, I know people who chase every Christian conference, every concert that comes their way, everything that comes to the country, but they don't have joy. I know people who've gone to church for years and they don't have joy. The truth is, that's sad. You can't keep adding flour to the bowl and at some point think you're going to have cinnamon rolls. You can't keep buying chocolate chips and at some point think you're going to have chocolate chip cookies. One ingredient doesn't make the bake. Look, you and I, we don't have to be baking experts to understand that, but one ingredient doesn't make the bake. Getting one bit of wisdom won't make your marriage a success while you ignore other bits of wisdom, right? One bit of God's power, word is powerful, but you're a dynamic being. You're a dynamic person made in the image of God. You're complicated and therefore you need the whole recipe for life. One worship song may stir your heart for more of God, but that's a recipe for, for your longing. Not, not, it's, not, it's not for like a gumdrop fix. Here you go. Here's a candy cane. You're, you're one-dimensional, so you don't need anything else. So there's joy for your life. That's, that's not the way it works. My friend, you are made in God's image, and therefore you need the whole recipe to life and joy. Not just a single ingredient. Don't cheat yourself. Get all the ingredients God has for you. Galatians 5 says this, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law, right? So where do we get these ingredients for true life, for true joy? Well, right now the grocery store comes to my mind, right? <laughs> the best place to get ingredients for life and true joy is from the source of life and true joy. Now, God uses delivery boys. I, I kind of think of myself as being one of his delivery boys. You know, I, I'm working in God's grocery store. I'm simply a delivery boy working for God's franchise. You know, when I was a boy, 
I worked through my high school years in a grocery store. I mean, I was into stocking the shelves, working the produce, cleaning the floors, collecting the buggies in the parking lot. Um, but you know, one thing I noticed about people when they would come do their shopping for their groceries, they always bought different things, different ingredients. Nobody just filled up their cart with just one thing. It was different ingredients. Nobody's diet consists of just the one thing. No recipe is just it's just one thing. Joy is complex. It's vibrant. Think of your physical body. It's one thing made up of many different parts. It's a recipe. Why do we think joy can be accomplished without all the ingredients that make it bake, right? You can't fake the bake. You've got to make the bake. And that's true because it rhymes. <laughs> So where, where is the spiritual grocery store of ingredients for this precious thing we call the joy of the Lord, God's joy? The Bible verb for joy is rejoice. To put joy in motion is to rejoice. You re-joy, you activate the joy. You know, it's the same Hebrew word for joy and for rejoice. Can you imagine if everyone started rejoicing? If everyone started activating real joy, it would be like turning on a billion Christmas lights in every corner of life. Life would shine with joy. My friend, God's joy is powerful. And I'll tell you this about God's joy. It's terrifying to the enemy of our souls because it's unstoppable. Joy is a spiritual nuclear reactor that makes your design unstoppable, but it must get in you, not just on you. That's why Jesus came to get joy in you to the full. You're called to be a vessel of God's love made in the image of God, but you're made to be full of God's joy. Look at John 15 verse 11, Jesus talking and he says this, I've told you these things. So you know, when Jesus is talking, he's only talking and saying the word of God, right? I've told you these things. I've spoken the word of God, he's saying, that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy and gladness may be a full measure and complete and overflowing. He's saying, I want you to have joy, my joy in you to the full, but running over so that you become a conduit now and an expression of God's joy into this world. So we're getting instructions here from Jesus on how to get his joy. He tells us these things. Did you notice that quote? These things. He says, I've told you, quote, these things. I've told you the word of God in these ingredients. He tells us these things. Notice not one thing, but things. Jesus puts things in his word to get in us. Then we use the download from Jesus, activate it, and we rejoice. We rejoice. We redelight in God. We redelight in his saving power. See, that's what Philippians 4 verse 4 says. It says, rejoice in the Lord. Delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I say, rejoice, rejoy over and over. Paul wrote Timothy in his letter to the Christians in Philippi, basically giving them the how-to of life, rejoicing in the Lord. It's like a recipe for a life of joy. Check it out. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, he says, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable. Now look at this. This is a recipe he's putting together. He's got ingredients. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center them in your mind and implant them in your heart. You know how I memorize this? I call it the through plan. God gives us the through plan for joy, right? So I, I kind of use it as an acronym, through, T-H-R-U, true, honest, right, undefiled, right? There's my, my first three, true, honest, right, and then undefiled is kind of a transferred into pure. Remember, because he said pure and wholesome. So the through plan, T-H-R-U, through, and then you get into which is the next part, pure, lovely, admirable. Oh, I like that. And then I kind of put the A-N of plan, I put it into anything of excellence and worthy of praise. You see, this is the spiritual grocery store for the ingredients of joy, J-O-Y, to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. 
So let's do this. Let's get another recipe and watch how that the end product, the outcome is made up of ingredients and then heat and pressure added to it. Check this out. Pam doing another bake. That's right, we've got to rejoice. That means to rejoy over and over again. I've got Anaviv and Lily with me today. And Anaviv, what are we going to be making? We are going to be making reindeer chow. Yay for us. Well, let's get started. So first up, we have seven cups of Chex Mix. Okay. And then in a microwavable bowl, we are going to pour our chocolate chips. Oh, oh yummy. I like to eat those just by itself. Next, we will add some peanut butter into our bowl. Mm. That's a lot of peanut butter. Don't you just want to get your finger in there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would have that. It looks with, so ah. fun. <laughs> I would love to have that some with some reindeer chow. It's going to taste really good. Mm. And then what else now? Next, we are going to add butter. Yay! Probably going to need a spatula. Put that butter in there. Mm. And then we microwave it, right? for yep. 30 seconds. And then we stir it up, right? Yes. And then next now, we are going, we to, were add. going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, vanilla extract. Extract. Awesome. There we go. Yummy, yummy. Ooh. Pour all this chocolatey ingredients. All this yumminess. All this yumminess. This bowl. It looks just plain chocolate. Oh. Wow. Let's all get in here together and help stir it. Yeah. Stir it all together. We will each take a scoop of this. Well, a bunch of scoops. Yummy, keep going. Hey. So we put it in there. Yummy, yummy. Oh, it's beautiful. And then you just stir it up real good? Yeah. Okay. Mmm, mm. so good. It's so right, chocolatey. Mm. Oh it's so good. Do you have some kind of just encouragement for the Christmas season? Well, my prayer for this Christmas season is joy. Because joy spreads all around the world so people can make right decisions. That sounds good. Merry Christmas. Joy to the world. world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive the King. Oh, I hope, I hope we're not making you too hungry. I hope we're inspiring you about Christmas and something more than just treats and baking and cooking. I, I hope you're getting inspired to get the ingredients for true joy. Jesus, joy. As a child of God, you get the rights and the privileges to receive from King Jesus his benefits, which are joy. Oh, my friend, joy to the world. You're called to be a conduit, a messenger of joy to this world. I love what Mother Teresa said. She said, it is Christmas every time you let God love others through you. Yes, it is Christmas every time you smile at your brother and offer him your hand. Wow. What an amazing word from an amazing woman. I think that is such a precious quote. Jesus' joy in Mother Teresa motivated her to reach out her hand. This precious little woman motivated by the joy of the Lord, motivated by the Christmas message to extend her hand and love one more person, one more person. And it ended up being millions of people being inspired by her act of love and her act of joy. Jesus' joy in you leads to peace on earth. People want peace on earth right now. But the thing is, we're not talking about keeping the peace. We're talking about making peace. It's just like making it, getting that bake. You, you've got to make the real thing. You can't just keep compromising and expect peace to show up on your door. You've got to authentically have it made. And Jesus he is the Prince of Peace. True joy has power to make something amazing happen on earth. True joy has great power to even bring about peace. Let's look again at Luke 2, this time starting at verse 10 through to 14. But the angel said to the, the shepherds, he said, 
Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the town of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, angelic army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased." Part of the significance of great joy is the outcome of peace on earth. You see, you don't have to wait until you get to heaven to have God's amazing peace. It's peace. Where did the angel say? On earth. Peace on earth. When you see a precious little child and someone loves them dearly, provides and protects for them, blesses them with the desire of their heart, even if it's a freshly baked Christmas treat, the way their little eyes light up, it's that sense of being fulfilled. It's not just the gift or the cookie or the hot chocolate. It's the whole package. Someone loves them. Someone cares for them. Someone protects and nurtures them. A child that is truly safe and protected never consciously thinks of that ingredient as a part of joy. It's just, it's built into their life. It's baked into their life experience. And thank God it is. But there are so many children where the main ingredient of joy is missing. There are so many people living in the street right now where the ingredients of joy are missing. What's the answer? Oh, my friend, it hasn't changed for 2,000 years. Remember, quote, shepherds were out living under an open sky in a field. That's what Luke 2 says. The angel said, I've got good news of great joy. Unto you is born a savior and his name is Jesus. You see, the main ingredient to life has never changed. You cannot just give people food and shelter. That's wonderful. But you can't just give them food and shelter and think that they'll survive without true joy. There's people committing suicide that have lots of money. They've got lots of houses, cars. They've got family. They've got children. They've got so many good things, but they don't have joy. There are people living on the streets that actually have more hope and joy than them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, born of the blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus, the King of eternity, was born in a manger in Bethlehem. There was no room in the inn. The shepherds were told, this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And that's how you will know he's the true Savior. Why was that such a big deal? Because that's exactly how the sacrificial lambs were born. The priest would identify a spotless, perfect lamb, wrap it in cloths, and lie it in a manger to separate it as a worthy sacrifice for the sins of the people. And here was an actual baby. Jesus was perfect spotless without any sin and he lived a perfect life never sinning the bible says he went about doing good he healed people jesus was always helping people he he intercepted people that were trying to even murder people and he stopped it he was always helping people and yet he was accused of crimes that he never committed and he died on a cross for your sins and for my sins. Jesus truly is the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. The Christmas lamb that the shepherds saw laying in the manger where the priest normally would lay the baby lambs. And the rest of the good news of great joy, what's the rest of it? Jesus rose on the third day and he reigns as the king of kings. Growing up without a dad, I always had this desire to know what it would be like to have a real father. I guess you could call it my, my ultimate Christmas wish. But you see, that's what Christmas is all about. God, the heavenly father, gave the gift of his only begotten son, all of his love, all packaged up in Jesus. God gave Jesus to me, to you, so that we could be children of the Most High God, so that we could have a Heavenly Father. I wrote this little song called Little Boy's Prayer as a tribute 
to that amazing Christmas love. It's a story of a young boy who helps his dad find the true meaning of Christmas and what ends up being the real ingredient of joy and true identity for living his life all year long. Why don't you grab a listen to this? He had all his new pajamas. You know the red ones with the feet. And it's now four-year tradition we have each Christmas Eve we reached out those little hands toward me when I called him hey you sleepy head and then he snuggled tight against my shoulder when I carried him off to bed Then gently I kissed him And whispered goodnight Then I heard daddy As it turned out the light He said Can we have Christmas All the year long Tell stories of Jesus And sing all his songs Something is special in our home today. Can we ask Jesus to stay? First I had to just smile to myself. Such a childish request. Then he started to list one by one All of the things that he liked the best He said, Daddy, you found your old Bible you Read about the shepherds, the kings, and a star Something nice you said to Mommy Well, she almost cried but then you kissed her real hard Now I like the toys But it's not what I mean well, Can we keep this love after we take down the tree? Can we have Christmas all the year long? Tell stories of Jesus and sing all his songs Something is special in our home today. Can we ask Jesus to stay? I closed the door and stepped into the hall. My wife was standing there. My wife had heard it all. And my heart was pounding. My child made me understand. That my family needed more than just another tradition She said, can we have Christmas all the year long? Tell stories of Jesus and sing all His songs Cause something is special in our home today Can we ask Jesus Jesus, can we ask Jesus to stay? Oh, Jesus, would you stay? You can ask Jesus to stay in your life. You can open up your heart and invite Jesus to live in your life all year long. Have Christmas with joy forever, starting now, not just in December, but all year long. Pastor Stephen, I want that so bad. I'm so tired of being sad and depressed, especially at Christmas time. I understand that. I understand how you feel. Pray this prayer with me and invite 
the sacrificial lamb of God, Jesus, God's only begotten son, into your life right now. Pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself. You came to earth as a baby, born of the blessed Virgin Mary. You lived a sinless life, perfect life. You died on the cross for my sins. You rose up from the grave. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Help me now to live for you. Show me how to honor you this Christmas. Give me your joy. I'm not alone. You're always with me. In your precious name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.